Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about the wonderful world of Amazon. Now, Amazon and QuickBooks Online are a very, very powerful tool. Amazon is a fantastic platform to sell your stuff to the whole of the world if you need to. And QuickBooks is a great tool for being able to record all of that information so you can be compliant for tax reasons. But asking the two of them to talk to each other is possible and actually when set up is an absolute lifesaver but you need to be consideration of how it's set up in the first place. And why? Why are we doing all this? Well, I'm gonna answer all those questions. But first of all, I need to roll the VT, get on with it, and let's get going. Roll that VT. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer of Fanta New Logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, head of accounts here at Boffix, and also your friendly podcaster who goes each goes live each and every Monday morning at 8.30 a.m. for Ask the Accountant. Now, in today's video, we're going to make this dead straightforward. We're going to talk about, first of all, why. Why do we care about connecting the QuickBooks to Amazon? Well, one of the first things to figure out is the fact that when Amazon pay, do a payout, so they put money into your bank account to reward you for selling items on their platform, then that's not the full story. You see, when they put the money in the bank account, they've already taken into account the things, seller fees, maybe any refunds. There's a lot of moving parts that's happened. And if you just recorded the income that hit your bank account, you won't be recording your income properly. That's why using a piece of software like QuickBooks Online means that we don't just have to take for account what's hit the bank account, but also we can record the items that are going in easily using the App Store. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to go straight into it. I'm going to have a look at our information. We're going to connect our Amazon account to QuickBooks Online, and we're going to show you how it's done. Let's have a look. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm going to get myself into my account. And here it is. So as you can see here, I've sold a few items. I've got through things that are coming through. I've got a balance. I've got items that are coming in and everything else. And it's great to see that I've got some sales coming through. And at some point, those sales, which will hit the balance, means that we're going to then get that information in. But if I was to go and look at this balance in a little bit more detail, go to payments, you'll notice that basically I am actually seeing some sales have come through, less expenses. Uh, which in my case happens in fees, which basically means that when my proceeds hit my bank account, they're not going to be representative of my true sales. I need to account for that. So it says here that I've got an intake of £174.60, which will basically arrive in my bank account in a few days' time. So I need to start thinking about how to be able to record it. Because if I was to only record the £174.60 in this case, I've been neglecting the fees that have been allocated against me. I need to figure that out. So how can I do that? Well, I'm going to work backwards and I'm going to work backwards to my recent payout of £172.59. That's going to hit my bank account soon. But when it hits my bank account, what I want to be able to make sure I do is basically tell QuickBooks that without that £172.59, how much is sales and how much is fees? Let's go and have a look and have a figure out that one. So the way I would do it is you can go to the transaction view to see all the individual transactions, which are the sales figure on this side, which is the important figure to be selling, and also your Amazon fees down here. Amazon also include what's called a reserve balance as well, where they're trying to basically make sure they've got enough cash in their balance to be able to make sure if anything like refunds or anything happened, they're going to be able to re record for it. You've got your statement options here. And the statement gives you an opportunity to be able to download it. So in my position here, I know that I'm waiting for a payout of £172.59. So for me to do this, I need to get a report. So the best thing for me to do is go to my reports page. It says on this report, you can report date range, track report status, add custom tags. I've got an opportunity to look at a specific custom range. And I can look at custom report tags as well. And I can request a report and sort the report as needed and sort it as one well and end it from there. So let's say then that I want to go for a month and I'm going to do the whole of January and press request report because I want to do reports at the same time on a regular basis. And then that way, if I was going to do this manually, this is how I would do it. 
I would go into request the report, look for the report that I needed in this case in January. Report type wise, I do have the opportunity of doing summary transaction or deferred transaction. In my case though, a transaction is going to be the right one for me. Now it does take a little bit of time, but it's actually at the moment it's in progress in terms of the status. But this would be if I was going to do it manually. Now, we'll come back to the manual process in a minute, but what is the way we can do things that are going to clear it up and make it automated? Well, in QuickBooks, I can go to my app section, I can go to find apps, and I can type in the word Amazon just here. Now you're going to get a lot of options here. I would say that there's the A2X one, which we've used in the past, amazing software, absolutely love it. I would say that Cinder's a good one as well. And I'd also say Dex Prepare and Dex Position, at De and, and the other Dex solution would be a good one as well. But for today, we're actually gonna use Amazon Marketplace Connect by Intuit. Now, if you're gonna use any of the others, including Link My Books, use my link down below my link tree, go to the resource area, and you'll see links there, take you straight there to make it easier for you. But let's use the, this one here. Now, the reason we like the Amazon connector by Intuit is because it's actually really straightforward to use. And all you need to do is connect that Amazon connector, and it's all about, in the connections area, connecting it from here. So I can add a connection, I can choose my Amazon, and connect to the Amazon Marketplace. So I'm gonna go and make sure that I've got everything all set up, so I need to make sure I've got that right and connect to Amazon. So I'm gonna make sure I'm going to the right one again. And I can press select. And then basically it's gonna say, can you authorize it? Yep, I agree, confirm. Now what this connection does is it takes the information from Amazon and it puts it into QuickBooks for us. Now we need to be a little bit careful. And there's a bit we need to set up in QuickBooks to make sure this works perfectly. So for example, in the QuickBooks area, I'd recommend going to the transaction and chart of accounts. From chart of accounts, press new. And from here, I'd imagine, I would recommend leaving it as a caching bank and create an account called Amazon Control Account. Save and close. Now the reason you want to do this is because this is where you want QuickBooks to deposit its information. What you don't want to do is let it go in directly straight into the bank account because what that could do is cause you issues in terms of reconciliation. But if you use the control account to have all the information being posted from Amazon directly into there, then what will happen is when you get those payouts, you can set the payout to go directly against the Amazon control account as well. And what that should mean is that you are then going to be in a position where that Amazon control account will either be zero, meaning everything's okay, or it's gonna be the balance of the next payout. So in my case, 172 pound. Let's see how that works. So now I can manage my connection, in this case, the Amazon, and I can have a choice. Do I want it when an order's created, do I wanna create a transaction going from here? Now that's gonna be really important if you're VAT registered, because that way you can set what happens in the different scenarios of what VAT registration is gonna be. I don't really want that though. I want a financial event. From here, I can then go and I can choose where I want the payouts to go to, in my case, that Amazon one. Just a quick refresh. Amazon control account. So I want my payouts to go directly there. When it comes in, I can choose what the tax code's gonna be. And what the default payment method's gonna be. I can then choose where I want things to come from an income point of view. Now, in my case, actually it probably makes it easier. I just put everything to sales, but you can split them to different areas if you want to. And then from an expense point of view, I can put these to different areas as well. Again, you can split these out as much as you want to, or you can put them to exactly where you believe they need to be. For ease, I'm just gonna put all of these to cost of sales, but in reality, I would definitely go through and make these as different expense categories just so for my purpose, I can keep on top of how they're going. And it's simple as that. I can press save. Now, if you use the order or the stop levels, you can get a much more detailed approach. But for me, that's all I really want to bring in. I can turn on automatic sync, and I can even do a sync now to just bring everything in place. Now, it won't go back too far. It's only go back 
around about 90 days or so. That's why when I go back to my Amazon one, status is still progressing. But this is the report I would use, download it. And it's this database here that I wanna bring in the information. Because from here, I've got my product sales, I've got my selling fees, FBA fees, and I've got my others. And it'll give me a total of effectively what I should be considering to come in my bank account. Now we've actually done a spreadsheet that can convert this for you. If you use the link page on my link tree, you'll find the resource page. And from the resource page, you'll be able to find the area where you can download a file to do that. We're gonna do a separate video of how that file works, but just keep an eye on it because that's gonna make things easier for getting things in manually. So there we have it. Now what will happen is every time that a payout appears in my bank account, I will have a corresponding entry going into my Amazon control account, which is going to split out for me my income and my expenditure. And that's gonna make my life so much easier in recording going forward. Now remember, I've only done and I've only approached the fact that we've done payouts because I'm not VAT registered in this case, or because my VAT registration is actually really straightforward and it's not gonna cause me any issues. But for all other situations, you're gonna to have to result to the other solution, which is more of a sales one. Now, we're gonna do a separate video on exactly how that works, but for now, this is the best way for you to connect your data. And to go back and find the information historically, don't forget to use the seller center, go to a reports repository, and from there, you'll be able to gather the data. And we'll figure out how that works again in the following video. So if you do need more videos about this, then don't forget to like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff, because we've got lots more content coming on how we're gonna deal with Amazon. But let me know in the comments below, how have you found the connection so far? Has it been working for you? Or is it working in the way you were expecting? Let me know and we'll carry on and look at it from there. So don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this new series. Hello and welcome to this video. 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 Alright, let's get it set. Let's do this. Oh man, you're alright. Yes, I'm aware we go live every Monday. The next generation is that everyone else that missed it. Yeah. So, come All right, you've told us what you love about the industry, but what would you change about the industry? Where do I start? Because during that period of time, where did everyone turn to? Their accountant, right? Their advisor that would give a new, all the phenomenal work for small business.